Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will learn about substation earthing and its calculations. By the end of this video, you will fully understand how substation earthing works, the steps involved in designing earthing for a substation and their mitigation strategies. First, let's briefly discuss the objectives of substation earthing. The primary role of any substation earthing is to dissipate the short circuit current into the earth without damaging the area, limit the potential gradient throughout the substation and maintain the step and touch voltages within safe values. Let's now find out how substation works exactly. Substation earthing is the combination of horizontal and vertical electrodes which are buried in the soil and connected to the non-current carrying metallic parts of the equipment and the neutral points of transformers and generators. When any fault occurs in the substation, the substation earthing will give the low resistive path for the fault current to flow and dissipate in the soil in order to limit the potential gradient throughout the substation so that it can maintain the touch and step voltages within a safe level. Also, a variety of national and international guidelines are followed for designing substation earthing. These include IEEE 80, which is the IEEE guide for safety in AC substation grounding, the Indian Standard 3043 Code of Practice for Earthing, and the British Standard 7430 Code of Practice for Earthing. Finally, coming towards the eight crucial steps involved in designing substation earthing. Number one, soil resistivity test. The soil resistivity test is the first and most important factor in substation earthing. It measures the quality and nature of the soil to conduct the electrical current and the Werner four-point method is the most commonly used technique to find the resistivity of the soil. Secondly, Fault current. Fault current is the abnormal high magnitude current that flows in the substation during faulty conditions, like a short circuit or lightning strikes. Based on the predetermined data of fault current of the substation, you can do a conductor sizing and design the entire earthing process. Number three, conductor sizing for earth mat. Based on the fault current data and soil resistivity test, you identify the required size of the conductors for the earth mat. It is selected based on the following properties. The current carrying capacity of the conductor, the thermal capacity per unit volume, the corrosion effect of the conductor. Now, number four, selecting quantity and length of the earth electrode. An earth electrode is a conducting element buried directly in the ground, facilitating the flow of fall current towards the ground. Again, based on SRT or soil resistivity test, and fault current data, you select the required number and length of ground electrodes. Number five, selecting the mesh size for grounding grid, also known as horizontal conductor and earth mat. A system of interconnected ground electrodes arranged in a pattern over a specified area and buried below the ground of the earth is a grounding grid. Its mesh size is also calculated based on resistivity and fault current. Number six, Calculating touch potential and step potential. The voltage between the feet of a person standing near an electrified earth object is known as step potential. Similarly, touch potential is the surface potential at the point where the person could be standing and having his or her hand in contact with a grounded structure. For an ideal substation earthing, you calculate the achievable and tolerable values for touch and step potential, compare both of them and based on that, you identify whether the substation is safe or not for the given fault current. In case it seems unsafe, you should go with mitigation or redesign. We have explained touch and step potential in detail in our blog. The link is in the description. Number seven, calculating ground potential rise or also known as earth potential rise as defined in IEEE 80. It is the product of ground electrode impedance, reference to remote earth, and the current that flows through that electrode impedance. Calculating GPR is a parameter mentioned in the IEEE 80 standard. The formula for the same is here, where IG is the grid current and RG is the grid resistance. Now, number eight. Finally, the last step, measurement of grid impedance. The resistance depends primarily on the area to be occupied by the grounding system, which is usually known in the early design stage. As a first approximation, a minimum value of the substation grounding system resistance in uniform soil can be estimated using the formula of a circular metal plate at zero depth. Generally, it should be less than one ohm. Here's the formula below. 
Before moving to the last part of mitigation, please make sure you subscribe to our channel for regular videos on electrical engineering and installation. Now the last part, mitigation strategies. In case the earth grid is found to be unsafe for touch or step potential, then the following mitigation measures are to be taken to make sure the grid is safe. Number one, increase the number and length of electrodes. If the second layer soil resistivity is low when compared to the top layer, then you should increase the number of electrodes to make the grid safe. Number two, introduce dense mesh. If the top layer soil resistivity is low when compared to the bottom layer soil resistivity, increase the horizontal grid conductor to make the grid safe. Number three, increase grid area. To reduce the grid impedance or to make the grid safe, extend the grid conductor, then you can increase the grid area. Number four, soil treatment to reduce native soil resistivity. In case of high soil resistivity, backfill compound can be used to replace the native soil to reduce the resistivity. This will make the grid even safer. I hope you now have a clear understanding of substation earthing, its design parameters and mitigation strategies. At Axis, we have a team of 40 plus engineers who are here to help you to design, install and test all of your earthing and lightning protection systems. Our products have been used in substations, data centers, factories and even in everyday residential and commercial buildings. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos about lightning protection, grounding systems, along with a plethora of other videos about electrical engineering. Before skipping to another video, please note, you can only limit ground potential and protect a substation against the faulty current with the help of an earth mat. But how do you do that? Find out by watching our video right here.